Hi everyone. We're just going to give folks a minute or so to join us in the webinar. Thank you for joining us for another Tech Tuesdays. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Technology Tuesdays. My name is Lydia Nimke, and I'm very excited to bring you all today's presentation on wearable technology. You are all muted and have your cameras turned off by default, but please don't let that stop you from asking questions about today's presentation in the Q&A box down below and engaging in the chat. Uh, with us today, we also have Beth Gabriel in the background. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being with us here today. I'm hanging out at the East Branch and um, make sure to put your questions in the Q&A box and I will read them out loud to Lydia. Thanks, Beth. All right, let's jump in for today. So today we're going to cover a few of the different parts of wearable technology. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about like what is wearable technology. So we all have that frame of reference. Um, and then we're gonna talk about some of the pros and the cons of wearables. And finally, we're gonna talk about two of the, arguably the most popular wearables, which is the Fitbit and the Apple Watch. And we're gonna talk about those in a little bit more depth. Um, full disclosure, this is gonna be on the shorter end as far as Tech Tuesdays normally go. So there's plenty of time for questions about this or any other Tech Tuesdays. More than happy to go retroactive with y'all. All right, so first up, what is a wearable? If you've ever heard someone mention wearable technology, but you weren't quite sure what they meant, I will try and give you as concise a definition as possible. Wearable technology is a general term for a group of devices, including fitness trackers and smart watches that are designed to be worn throughout the day. These devices are often called wearables for short. Wearables have become increasingly popular over the past few years, but the basic idea is, you know, has been around for quite some time. For example, if you've ever worn a wristwatch or used a pedometer to track your miles while you're running, you've already used a simple kind of wearable. Today's wearables can actually connect with your existing devices like computers and smartphones, which means they can do a lot of interesting things. Wearables fall under the umbrella of the Internet of Things where devices that were never connected to the internet before, like refrigerators, home security systems, cameras, watches, necklaces, are now a part of an ever expanding network of things, just random things. So there are quite a few different types of wearable devices and we'll go over a few of them today. They all have their, you know, specific intended purposes and the things that they're very, very good at and the things that people use them for. First up is the fitness tracker, uh, which helps keep track of the number of steps the user walks each day and does things like monitor heart rate. Using this information, the device is able to calculate and report accurate data on things like calorie burn and exercise done by the user. These are, have been around for quite, you know, about a decade or so, maybe even a little bit longer. And now they have become quite commonplace. Uh, lots of people are using these to, you know, make sure they stay active throughout the day. A smartwatch is a watch that does a little bit more than tell time. It 
provides things like notifications um, on calls, messages, emails, social media updates, along with a host of lesser known features that really depend on the specific device and the compatible apps you have installed on it. These are kind of closer to like a mini phone on your wrist than a fitness tracker is. Another type of wearable device are things like smart jewelry. For example, pictured here is the Aura Ring, which has multiple sensors, including infrared optical pulse measurement, a 3D accelerometer, gyroscope, and body temperature sensors. And for this specific device, the sensors focus on providing insights into three areas, readiness, sleep, and activity. I've also seen them come in the form of necklaces, bracelets, and so on. Things that are meant to look pretty, like any piece of jewelry, to the beholder at least, um, and meant to have that smart functionality as well. Smart clothing is trying to break into the market all the time. Um, I don't own any smart clothing, but as we can see pictured here, um, this person in the photo has controls for his music built in to the you know, sleeve of his jacket, which would be quite cool, especially in the winter time when you don't even wanna lift up your sleeve to get at your watch or pull out your phone and use it when it's very, very cold. It looks like he also has a battery pack for charging devices uh, somewhere in the jacket. And it also looks like he has headphones perhaps inside the hood. And I've run into this before, you know, where if you're a walker or someone who uses public transit and it's the winter time, you don't necessarily want to deal with your hood bumping into your headphones or knocking your earbuds out of your ear. So this could be a pretty cool use of wearable technology. I've also seen some coats this year that actually have heaters inside of them. I don't know how those work, but that is cool with me as well, especially on days like today and yesterday. Safety wearables are another type of wearable device that includes things like the flare bracelet pictured here, which actually has a hidden button that allows you to do things like trigger a fake phone call, so you have an excuse to get out of a conversation, uh, text friends for help, send your GPS location, or even contact 911, all without touching your phone. This would be super useful if for some reason um, someone separated you from your phone, wasn't allowing you to make calls. They may not think to separate you from the pretty gold cuff on your wrist, right? So you can still have the ability to contact 911 and send your GPS location to them, which is really valuable and potentially life-saving. Safety wearables also extend to other things uh, like the Joybit safety monitor for kids. Uh, this is a great tool to use if you're in one of those highly populated, you know, go, go, go moving areas like an airport or a mall with a little wanderer. I was a little wanderer as a youth. I was always getting lost. Some people have even used this on their outdoor pets to maintain an idea of where they are. This in particular also has big implications for our loved ones with dementia and keeping them safe and knowing their location. Another type of wearable is the implantable wearables. And these are surgically implanted underneath the skin. These are usually used for medical purposes like tracking contraception, insulin levels, etc. cetera. Um, and they are usually medical devices for a very specific purpose. I'm not gonna be able to run out and just decide to get something implanted in, into me, or I wouldn't, let's say. Um, 
but some folks are doing things like implanting RFIDs to, you know, open their doors to their car, their house, et cetera, et cetera. Some folks are deciding to like electively do that. So that is a type of wearable as well. And there's many more. Um, there are things like smart glasses and contact lenses that can record or display information to the wearer. And there are things like smart shoes that can record your steps and so on and so on. So pretty much any piece of article, any piece or article of clothing that you, you regularly wear, there's probably a company out there and they may be a startup and they may just, you know, have gotten their first round of funding through GoFundMe, but there's probably a company out there that's trying to make it smart and that's trying to make it connect to the internet so you can get more use out of it. So knowing what sort of devices are out there, we obviously should talk about the good and the bad about them, the pros and the cons. In the last day, there's been such a surge in popularity in wearable technology, your activity devices, smart watches, smart clothing, and consumers and companies are beginning to use these devices for so many reasons, a variety of applications. Since there's no sign of us going backwards to having less smart devices, less devices on our person at any time, it's important to consider, you know, the impact on society and the pros and cons of wearables. So let's start with the pros. Um, wearable technology does provide us with the ability to monitor our fitness levels and track our location with GPS and view text messages more quickly. Best of all, probably the biggest pro I can say is that they are hands-free and portable and they eliminate the need to take our devices out of our pocket. So if I hear a notification on my cell phone and I'm out about and about in the regular world, maybe talking to somebody, but I am waiting on a text, maybe it's an important text, I don't know. Instead of having the urge to like look at my phone and block my face from whoever I'm with, I can just glance at my watch like I'm checking the time and see if the text is a spam text or the text I'm waiting for. So that is a big value to me at least. Before wearables, it was possible to obtain a lot of this information but it was sometimes a hassle and required devices that weren't always the most convenient. Um, wearables are connected to our smart devices and transmis transmitting information to them and viewing it later is a really simple process. Whereas before, if you wanted to track your steps throughout the day or track your steps specifically for a walk, You'd have to remember to clip on your pedometer, probably reset it from the last time you used it, make sure that it's working, and then go on your walk and then take it off and then remember to record the number from the pedometer. So there's a whole lot of steps that go into that process that have basically been eliminated with some of these wearable devices. Having easy access to that data really helps you with goal setting, and tracking your progress. They also will give you reminders for things that have positive implications, right, for health. Um, reminders to stand or walk. I'm always getting those while I'm at work and while I'm at home. And it's just a little reminder to myself that, hey, I haven't moved in an hour. I should get up and go do something. And it, it really does provide a source of, of motivation. It's internal motivation. It's all coming from me because I don't necessarily care what the watch thinks, but uh, it does provide that, ex that little bit of push. So I can just be like, well, I need to get up and move around. Many wearables also have built-in heart mo monitors that give you real-time readings of your heart rate and to take that with a grain of salt, though, that can go on either side, right? 
because these these are not medical devices. These uh, wearable technologies are not medical devices, so they shouldn't be used, you know, in that realm at all. And a lot of them have been shown to incorrectly measure heart rate. So take that and put it on either side of the column you choose to. Now, there's, all, there's no guarantee, we're kind of moving on to the con side of things. There's no guarantee that people will continue to use wearables over a period of time. At first, you know, they're pretty novel and they're pretty exciting, but a 2016 study found that around 30% of people stopped using them because they didn't find them useful or they just got tired of using them. I think the study would be really interesting to have a more contemporary version done because I feel like smart technology has integrated our life a little bit more. So people are a little bit used to more used to things like wearables. But as of 2016, about a third of people just gave up on them. So uh, that's, that's pretty interesting to note. Now moving on to the definitive cons. There is a short battery life. Some devices like the simpler Fitbit trackers can last for several days, but some of the more advanced ones like the Apple Watch only are gonna last for about 18 hours or a day ish so. For some, it can definitely be a hassle to, you know, remember to regularly remove your watch to charge it, which is totally understandable. If you're not in that sort of charging mindset of like, every day I take off my watch at <laughs> 10 o'clock and charge my uh, watch or tracker, you know, it's, it's a hassle to remember to do for sure. But the people who make these wearables know this, and a large number of developers are looking into the possibility of wireless charging options that would eliminate the need to remove the device. As far as from my latest research that I've been looking around for this, I don't know that it exists for consumers yet, but hopefully soon technology is ever evolving, right? Some wearables have also been reported to measure data inaccurately on occasion. This could be especially dangerous when they're measuring data like heart rates. For individuals with heart conditions, a false reading may lead to an overexertion, which could lead to further issues down the road. And then many wearables also tend to have little to no security. So you're creating all of this data that's unencrypted in a lot of cases and that transfers through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections. That means it's pretty vulnerable. Cyber criminals could get their hands on it pretty easily if they wanted to. It's also important to consider how the, all that data you create through a fitness tracker or through your smartwatch your any of the other things we've mentioned today, how it becomes big data that can be collected and used by companies and governments. Your tracked information could be used for marketing or health purposes. I'll leave that to your imagination what that may look like. All the data from your, you know, smartwatch or your health app on your phone being shared with companies and governments. But there are positive ways this information could be used as well. As with all data that we create, there is an opportunity for it to be misused. And that's just the nature of the internet, right? So you do the best you can to protect yourself whenever possible. Currently, most of the data that's available via wearables isn't really valuable for, for cyber criminals to even care to pursue. It's not got a whole lot of credit cards or social security numbers or you know that those big important informational milestones that we want to keep as safe as possible so it's it's not a value to them to go after but as those wearables capabilities continue to evolve it may become valuable at some point in the future speaking of the future 
A number of industries are developing new and innovative types of wearable technology, particularly in the healthcare industry, where they're looking to take that step beyond just fitness trackers to create healthcare trackers. These could potentially be used to monitor things like blood pressure, vital signs, or blood sugar levels for diabetics. Even devices like smart hearing aids and glasses that measure vision performance are apparently being developed um, to kind of streamline those processes. Other devices like pet trackers, smart jewelry, AR, VR headsets are continuing to grow and gain momentum. I'm sure you've seen a lot more <laughs> VR headset funny videos um, in the last year than you've seen in years prior. There's a lot of potential in you know, this current moment, especially with the world how it is. So it'll be interesting to see where things go and how, how it impacts us all. Um, wearables also seem to be headed in the direction of authentication as a means of doing things like unlocking your home, getting into concerts, buying things at the store without having to go through the checkout process. For example, Disney currently uses a wearable in its parks called the Magic Band. I don't know if many of you have been to Disney recently, but it gives customers access to rides, their hotel rooms, uh, food, other features and, and things like that. And there are even smart tattoos in development that could be used for purposes like this as well. And I know when you say smart tattoos, maybe it's not a pleasant image that is first to come to mind when you say that, but in the one I looked at, they're essentially high-tech temporary tattoos that can carry and transfer information uh, to devices like smartphones and scanners. So if you imagine um, going to a convention or a festival and you buy, you know, the three day VIP pass, maybe that's a temporary tattoo that gets you access into, you know, the special rooms and the special areas that you paid that extra money for, things like that. If wearables do become a common way of authenticating experiences, it could really change how we interact with the world by speeding up a lot of processes in our life. Imagine if every line you were waiting in was as simple as, you know, scanning, scanning your watch or scanning something that is implanted in you. I don't know if, if I'm cool with that one. Um, <laughs> But it could definitely speed up those processes like visits to hospitals, security clearances, and things like that. So should you get one? I don't know. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether a wearable device is something that you would benefit from. With their increase in popularity, it's important, as it is with most things, to weigh the pros and the cons before committing to one. I would also suggest you do proper research on any devices you're considering and the companies that create it to make sure that they have ethical business practices, including but not limited to protecting your data and privacy. If you're looking to do some research on this, all Milwaukee Public Library locations have access to consumer reports, which is a great place to start doing your research for any big purchases and it helps especially with that comparison shopping and knowing what device is best for what purpose. All right, I don't see any questions thus far. Me neither, Lydia. Cool beans. Let's move on. <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about the Fitbit and the Apple Watch. So Fitbit, Fitbit is a popular brand of wearable technology, mainly consisting of activity trackers. These devices are geared towards helping improve your fitness and health lifestyles. 
They produce an array of devices that vary in price, function, and style. They range from around $60 to $200 for, you know, the latest models in the, the year. So, for example, looking here, we have our kids version, which has a little monster watch face on there. We have some less expensive versions here. We have some sort of mid-range versions over here, and we have like the most expensive $200 ones in the center there. So what does a Fitbit do? A Fitbit is a fitness tracker that tracks a variety of data related to your daily physical activity. The data varies depending on the device slightly. So whether you have one of the more expensive ones or the least expensive ones, the type of data it tracks can vary. But almost all of them track your daily steps, distance, calories burned, sleeping activity. And some of the more advanced ones can also do things like monitor your heart rate and track your GPS position which allows you to view your route, distance, and pace in the mobile app after a run, for example. In addition to tracking your activity, some of the more advanced models can do things like remind you to move, give you call and text notifications from your smartphone, and allow you to control music. Fitbit actually, if you're considering getting one, it has a helpful quiz um, on its website that asks kind of what you need from your device and will match you with the best one. But of course, because it's coming from the company that's trying to sell you the device, I would still, you know, check out Consumer Reports, check out a few different sources before you commit to any one decision. Fitbit devices allow you to view a good amount of your tracked activity on their built-in screens. Most models allow you to view this information just by tapping on the device, while others can be activated by turning your wrist to you or using the touch screen. You can also view a more detailed account of your activity, including all past activity through the Fitbit app. All of their devices are equipped with Bluetooth, which, let, which lets them sync with your smartphone or computer. This basically means that all of the data it gathers is transmitted relatively seamlessly. In addition to storing your activity stats, the app can help you keep track of your nutrition, set daily goals for exercise and sleep, as well as earn badges and challenge friends who also use a Fitbit device. So if you want to get a little competitive with your walk-in buddy, you can challenge them through the Fitbit app. Now, I actually have a short video to show you all that's going to kind of serve as our demonstration for today because I don't have a Fitbit, so I can't really show you uh, all the fun things you can do with it. So let's watch this video here. The interactive display on Fitbit Charge 2 lets you see your all-day activity stats, record workouts, and even start a guided breathing session. You navigate Charge 2 with two simple actions, pressing the button on your tracker and tapping the screen. Press the button to go through the menu, your heart rate, multi-sport modes, the stopwatch, guided breathing sessions, and alarms you set in your Fitbit app. To view your all-day activity stats, start at the primary clock face and tap the bottom of your display to see your steps, heart rate, distance, calories burned, floors climbed, active minutes, and hourly activity. With some clock faces, you'll be able to see two stats at a time. To start a guided breathing session, the stopwatch, or a workout, Hold the button down until the activity starts. To stop or finish, hold the button down again. If you want even faster access to your stats, the Quick View feature on Fitbit Charge 2 lets you see them simply by raising your wrist. 
The last stat you checked on screen will always be the first one you see. And there you have it, a display that lets you do more. Now take it for a spin and make those stats stack up. So that is a good look at the Fitbit and some of its most essential functions, you know, recording workouts, monitoring your steps and activity, still telling time, things like that. Moving on to the Apple Watch. Apple has, of course, been one of the most popular tech companies for quite a while now. Um, more recently, they've entered the world of wearable technology with things like the Apple Watch, which is Apple's specific version of a smartwatch. It is a computerized wristwatch that connects to the internet and other smart devices. Prices can really range from $150 for an older model, and the models are called series in Apple watches, to $500 for the latest edition or special edition Apple watch, and even a lot more if you, you know, add in a gold band or some other fancy doodad that is expensive to add into it but generally $150 to $500 is the price point for this one. So while it is possible to use the Apple Watch on its own, you do need to have an iPhone to use most of its features. Using Bluetooth, you can pair your smartphone and your Apple Watch, which allows you to view and reply to text messages, answer, emails, answer phone calls, access your music and your photos, all without taking your iPhone from your pocket. So it's literally a decent amount of the functionality of your full phone on your wrist. You can also use it as a remote for your Apple TV or pair it with Apple AirPods or any other Bluetooth headphone. Uh, to play your music while you're out and about exercising or what have you. One of my favorite uses for it um, is using it as like a Bluetooth remote for my camera shutter. So instead of having to set up the timer and run back to where I want to be in the picture, I can set my camera up, um, my smartphone up, and use the remote shutter button on my watch to take the picture, which I think is so cool and saves me a lot of running back and forth trying to get the picture right. In addition to those functions, out the Apple Watch does function as a standalone fitness tracker. So it has kind of all the smartwatch functions and it also encompasses the fitness tracker functions, like tracking the amount of time you're standing, moving, and exercising throughout your day, as well as the number of steps you've taken and the calories you've burned. It does have that built-in heart rate tracker, which gives you a readout of your current heart rate. All of this information gets logged so you can view it later or track it over an extended period of time. You can also download so many third-party apps to customize your experience. Just locate the app you're, you'd like and make sure it reads offers Apple Watch app beneath its icon. So for example, a Nest thermostat, um, I don't have one, but if you had one and you uh, wanted to download the app onto your Apple Watch, you could get that app from the app store and just making sure that it says offers Apple Watch app in the description. You'll download it to your iPhone and it will sync seamlessly with your Apple Watch pretty much as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. I think it'll sync up and then you have the Nest app on your watch and you can do simple things like you know adjust the temperature and things of that nature. 
every app you have on your Apple Watch has a corresponding application on your smartphone. So it's really easy to view any information in one place or another. For fitness tracking information, you'll need to look in your health app on your phone, unless you have a you know, specific app you use for tracking your runs or your bicycle rides or your swimming. And they do exist. Um, for watch specific information, like the different watch faces or complications, Apple Watch has an app of its own by the same name that controls those sorts of things. So let's take a look at this video, which talks about the Apple Watch when it was first introduced to the market. Full disclosure, this video is from March of 2015. So it's six, almost seven years old at this point. It is quite old. I wouldn't take anything it says as gospel, but um, I have included it because while technology has advanced significantly since then, it still gives a really good overview of some of the popular features of the Apple Watch. So I figured, why not? It'll be a little funny to see how skeptical the reporters and the people uh, in the public are of Apple Watches at this point. So let's play that. This watch is writhing and whipping and clasping. It felt a little like 50 shades of Apple. It's not just with you, it's on you. The cheapest will cost 350 bucks. The most expensive, 18 karat gold. It is priced from $10,000. And for that, you can finally talk into your wrist. Nick Tracy calling Hemlock Holmes. This is 86 reporting into control. You can receive calls on your watch. I have been wanting to do this since I was five years old. And the day is finally here. It's here at last, the new Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio. Okay, the Apple Watch can do things Dick Tracy never imagined. I can see the current stock market, and it brings up my credit card. And then I just put my watch near the merchant terminal, and it even reminds you if you've been sitting too long. Remember when clocks used to tick? Well, this watch checks your ticker. You can even check your heart rate. Some sent tweets poking fun at Apple with iPhones taped to wrists. Oh, Apple's Kevin Lynch showed a message from his daughter saying she was locked out, then used an app to open his garage door from his wristwatch. Of course, there's the pesky problem of battery life. You can expect 18 hours. Responded someone tired of replacing your wristwatch battery once every three years? Get Apple Watch and enjoy charging it every 18 hours. Yeah, but look how cool the magnetic charger is. It will automatically click into place. It was as if time stood still during the Apple Watch event. Actually, it did stand still at 10.09. That is the time to which almost all watches are set in ads. From Gucci to Coach to Timex, it's thought to look symmetrical and optimistic like a smiley face. Though even digital watches are set to 10.09. Heck, even this bird clock was advertised at nine black cap chickadees past the tufted titmouse. The only mouse Apple offers is Mickey. Genimo, CNN, New York. So that's just a little silly kind of glance back in time to the initial reception of this uh, wearable. I'd say it's changed a little bit now. I can't speak for everyone by any means, but I think they're much more accepted in, you know, everyday society in an urban environment. I'll say I can't say anything about a rural uh, area because I don't live in a rural area, but I think, you know, I see lots and lots of folks of all ages with wearables, specifically fitness trackers and smart watches. Um, and, you know, they seem to be enhancing their life. Um, so, yeah. Now, are there any questions that you all have about wearables? or about anything Tech Tuesdays related or anything library related? I don't see any questions, Lydia. I like, I didn't know you could make Mickey Mouse. 
be your watch face though i had that watch when i was a kid <laughs> you get him and if you tap him he says Hoo-hoo, it's 1009 oh, stop <laughs> <laughs> that's so good <laughs> yeah but i don't see any questions from everybody right well um feel free to keep track of my email um we're gonna be on a little bit of a hiatus for a while, but I, my email will stay the same. So if you come across any questions as you're working through creating something on Canva or you know, creating a Google Slides presentation, I'm more than happy to try my best to help you out and be a resource for you all. Um, coming. <laughs> Coming up on Text Tuesdays, we have a host of new subjects because today is our last day of 2021. And so I do want to sincerely thank you all for joining us here at the library, the virtual library, and learning a little bit more about technology. Technology Tuesdays will come back on February 22nd. Um, and we'll come back with a vengeance with a host of new and exciting topics to go over. Um, I think Beth will put the registration link for the next series of Text Tuesdays in the chat. Um, so I hope some of you will register and join us for that. It's going to be the same time, same place, Tuesdays at 4 o'clock. And I'm going to be hard at work over the next couple of weeks to make these new pre presentations valuable and engaging as much as I possibly can. So I do appreciate your patience and your continued interest during the hiatus. Um, in the meantime, there's a Tech Tuesdays playlist on the Milwaukee Public Library's YouTube channel that has over 30 videos of all of the subjects we've covered so far. So if you missed any, uh, or you want you know want to go back and try some of the things we talked about on Tech Tuesdays, I'd highly encourage you to check them out. I'll actually include the playlist in our follow up email with today's recording so that you have easy access to that as well. And if you want to see more of Beth and I on occasion, uh, I'd encourage yeah, yeah. you to come to our book chat and I'll let Beth talk about it. Awesome. Thanks, Lydia. Um, so next Tuesday, the 14th at six, yeah, six o'clock central, um, we're going to be going through all of the favorite books that um, staff from the library have read and that patrons have read this year. You'll leave with a huge reading list of things that you'll want to pick up and we'll talk about some books that we're excited about that are coming in 2022. Um, it'll be a quick program, I'd say about 30 to 45 minutes. And the really cool thing is I have some prizes to give away. So if you pre-register for the program, I'll drop the registration link into the chat. Um, you might win a Milwaukee Film Festival membership or a Brunsville Collective gift card, which we would just mail to you in the snail mail. Um, I'll put that link right in the chat for you. And I hope to see you then. If you can't make the live, you can get the recording after the fact, which is always nice. Where did I put it? There it is. And yeah, let us know if you have any questions. And here's the link. Awesome. Thank you, Beth. I'm very excited for this program. So I hope to maybe see some of you all there. All right. And last slide of the day, once again, thank you so much for joining us both for Technology Tuesdays. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. You stay warm and cozy, and we'll see you in 2022.